Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 50, where you email me all your Flat Earth questions, and hopefully I can get to them. You can send them to msargent23 at comcast.net, that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I promise I do glance at all of them, but I, I only can read so, much, so many, so let's just get right to it, shall we? First one is called F.E. Question. Mark, if an explorer reached the edge of the barrier designed to keep us in, wouldn't he just follow the edge all the way around? Okay, so no one can enter the inner sanctum of, of Antarctica, but they can skirt the edge. Has no one done this? And wouldn't that mean the shape of Antarctica is a fabrication? Travis, uh, yes. But, uh, well, okay, first off, yes. What the mainstream maps show us as Antarctica is a lie. Plain and simple. Uh, has anyone circumnavigated Antarctica legitimately? Not that I know of. You know, there's a story of Captain Cook back in the day that it, that he traveled sixty thousand miles around the outer edge and never did find you know uh, an inlet. So yeah, it, it's it's a lie, and everything that you uh, are told about Antarctica is just simply not true. Short of the shoreline being a two hundred foot wall of ice. And then it plateaus up to about 14,000 feet. You remember, altitude kick sickness kicks in around 7,000 feet. Very unique continent, even by mainstream description. No indigenous uh, animal life, no plant life, no old civilizations. So, but a good question. This one is called Hello from Ireland. Hello. Love your documentary Under the Dome. Can you please tell me you are you Leisure, leisure X? I've been trying to get in contact with him, emailed the wrong person already. That must have been something Leisure X posted, but I just seen under one of his videos that Mark Sargent narrated. I was hoping you were the same person. Kindest regards, Luis Carey. And I will answer that person. So for those of you who are coming into this late, there were several people that made that took the flat earth clues and then they mashed them up and put them on their own channels and that's fine because my most of my stuff is creative commons license so you can take it and do whatever you want if you want the hits and one of them was called under the dome full documentary by i think that was by leisure x and the other one was called they are hiding god with the greatest lie ever and that channel i think was dr james so i am neither of those guys and yeah i gave away millions and millions of hits and thousands of dollars but who knew back when I put it out there, you know, you, you put the stuff out and you, you don't know. I didn't even, I wasn't even monetizing the channel anyway for the first 15 months. So more power to them. That's really great. But no, I am neither Leisure X or Dr. James. I, I only have literally one YouTube channel. It is called Mark K. Sargent. That is my name. Mark Kendall, K-E-N-D-A-L-L, Sargent. So there you have it. This one's called This is Mary Ansley. Literally, that's the title. Uh, Mark, thank you for giving me the opportunity to say I am very grateful for all your information. I have a passion for this also and hope to meet you someday. Would you be able to come to a meetup in Portland if I put that together? Uh, maybe. Portland's a little bit of a stretch. Uh, I just went down there fairly recently for that eclipse in Salem when I was doing the, the blackout with the documentary team. Don't know if I'm going to be able to, to do a Portland meetup anytime soon. Not a bad idea. I, I just don't know if I have time. I, I, I might try though. We'll see. I mean, Portland's pretty close, but it's not that close. It's still what, three hours away. You say, no, three hours isn't that far. It's like, uh, okay, it can be. This one's called... Flat Earth Meetup in Vancouver, BC. Hey, Mark, unbelievable. These trolls, have you seen or heard this video? I mean, like, what whack jobs? That's from Mac. And, yeah, what, what somebody did was when they knew there was going to be a meetup in Vancouver, they actually made a video of them calling the restaurant to where the meetup was going to be and complaining and saying, you shouldn't let Flat Earthers go there. And I think it was... Literally, the title of the video is called Marine Says No Flat Earth Cult Meetings in Our Vancouver City. Sorry, Mr. Sergeant. And she spelled Sergeant wrong. I mean, completely wrong. It's not S-E-R-G-E-A-N-T. It's, it's phonetic. It's S-A-R-G-E-N-T. So thank you, Marine, for doing that. And it didn't stop them at all. The, uh, the meetup went off as planned. So by all means, do try to go places ahead of time. It's not going to do you any good. Because remember, 
the economy is still not great out there. They want the money. So you think they're going to turn away a large group of people that are buying food and drinks for, un I mean, remember the flat earthers run long. It's so yeah, silly. Okay. This one's called thanks. Mark seen the video on YouTube and found many of my already ideas being confirmed. My thing was constantly being told the world was seen as round, but every map we have shows us flat earth question mark. Not the globe, but maps. I'm writing a book that's to explain all the secrets of the earth and universe from the point of a vigilante who became the angel of death. Thanks for sharing. It took me eight years to find out how to end the story. With your help, I can try to finish writing my life's work. <laughs> wow. That's from Jack. Well, good luck with the novel, Jack. And if, if Flat Earth is the end of your novel, I can't think of a more fitting way to conclude it. This one's called Flat Earth GPS Questions. Hey Mark, I just saw your Under Dome YouTube video and I got one think I have. Remember, I'm reading this verbatim, guys. What to saw, saw about why GPS on planes crossing ocean stop working? Get back to me, please. All the best, Ivers. I am, and this is Ivers Fonda. I do not think that Ivers is from the United States originally or England for that matter. So, um, yeah, hopefully Ivers is continuing the journey. This one's called Question About Thermal Solar Videos. Hi, Mark. I am quite open-minded about the shape of the Earth in trying to gain an understanding of our complex universe and the implications of what spawned it into existence. I more heavily lean towards biblical creationism and intelligent design as there is more evidence to verify these origin of the universe theories than the theory of evolution and because of following a more strict form of investigation i had no choice but to look into this flat earth paradigm after investigating this for about two years i found something that i cannot quite explain as follows i know that nasa is known to cgi a lot of space images and video graphics but what do you think about one highly graphical images of galaxies and two, especially the thermal solar videos, the sun slowly rotating, showing thermal activity. I think they're all fake. Uh, look, we've got some really great CGI out there. We've had some good, we've had some good special effects for a number of decades. So, why, why would you hold on to it? I'm sorry. Let's continue. I am at a loss as how to explain these graphically intense images of the galaxies. What, what are you kidding? We can, we can draw them right now. Watch, go back and watch Contact with Jodie Foster. And tell me we can't do galaxies. Seriously. And thermal moving images of the sun. How is it possible to fake these if they are indeed fake? How do you understand this? Thanks for all your investigative journalism, Adam. And I think I just answered it. Adam, there, there is almost nothing we can do when it comes to special effects. Especially if you're doing like a pre-production. Live, we're still pretty limited. But if you're doing a, a, a pre-production, you know, shooting it all ahead of time. Seriously, look look back at any movie we've done in the last 15 years. We can make some some beautiful 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 stuff. All right, let's this one's called Light Capricorn 1, smiley face sort of. Hi Mark, hey just wanted to share something interesting I recently saw. There is a show on Netflix called Greenhouse Academy. You may have heard of this already. It's a silly teenage show. Please don't judge. I've been homesick and bored and it has Parker Stevenson, remember from the Hardy Boys. Oh yeah, I remember that guy. Uh, 70s he was a 70s star it's about a brother and sister who attend a strange boarding school for future world leaders in the first episode their mom a nasa astronaut is killed in an explosion of the rocket she's just been launched on apparently mom's super secret nasa mission before she was killed was researching something about magnetite deposits and earthquakes and her work would have made it possible to stop or create earthquakes fast forward to the last episode of the season and their mom is shown being held under sedation but obviously alive i also thought it's interesting that this is a remake of an israeli show and it was filmed in israel even though it's set in South southern california also that they actually call nasa nasa and not some made-up fake name throughout anyway hope all is well with you take care elizabeth awake Thank you, Liz Elsbeth. Elsbeth. E L S P E T H. Hopefully, I got that right. Thank you for that. This one's called Moon Program. Mark, 
why doesn't NASA turn Hubble around and show a picture of the moon buggies used on missions? Well, because they can't. They would give things away. Mark, why doesn't NASA turn satellites towards the moon and show us the great U.S. flag? Let's see question one. Three, satellites can show a quarter on the ground on Earth and see light years in space. Surely they can see a flag or moon vehicle left on the moon. And that's from Adrian. You are absolutely right. You should be able to turn a telescope. We've got some supposedly some great stuff out there. We should be able to turn it towards the moon and see just about everything that is there in the Sea of Tranquility. Absolutely right. Moving on. This one's called Under the Dome. Dear Sir. Well, that's awfully formal. Earth is flat? Yes, it is for sure. I'm 56 years of age, and I knew it since I was a kid. What I'm confused about is Antarctica can't only be geographically placed under South America if the Earth is flat. It must be around our whole flat planet Earth, right? Yes, you are right. Which automatically puts a big question mark. Why did Richard E. Byrd constantly travel to the same destination in the South Pole of Antarctica? Best regards, Dragon. Uh, Urso, Ur, Urosovic in Sweden. And no, no, Admiral Bird was all over the place. He wasn't just two two places. And as far as the South Pole goes, I think he knew. Uh, look up Operation Deep Freeze. Look up Operation High Jump. Just look about any operation he was involved with from 1950, I'm sorry, 1928 until his death in 1957. Admiral Bird knew, which is why he probably didn't exactly die of a heart attack in his home on the east coast of the United States. He was, they just couldn't take a chance with him. He was doing too many press conferences. So do, do some more research on, on Admiral Byrd. You'll find it. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Nope, that's a personal one. Don't want to look at that. This one's called Question. Hello, Mark. I live in Rapid City, South Dakota. I just moved here from Houston. I don't know anyone in this area that is awake or even a flat earther. How can I receive notice when you are going to meet up? I would like to join. Lori. Uh, Lori, just, just type in Flat Earth Meetup into YouTube. There's a whole bunch of them. In fact, there's been several in Houston so far and multiple ones in Texas as well. If, if, and also, if you're, doing, if you're thinking about doing a meetup, you don't have to wait for one. Literally, just pick a restaurant that's close to you. Send me the details. Like, oh, we're going to be at Bob's Restaurant at 7 p.m. on Saturday for a Flat Earth Meetup. Send it to me. Send me that info and send me your contact info because the people are going to have to RSVP to somebody and it's not going to be me. And I will make a promo, and then you can go from there and just run with it. It's worked really great in a whole bunch of cities. So hopefully you're listening to this, Lori. And thank you for the email. This one's called... Holy smokes, this is a really, really big one. Really, really big one. Um, okay, it's just it's by Kyle. Thank you, Kyle, from Kyle King from Toronto. A uh, little, little, little long email. And unfortunately, look, if you guys are going to send me an email, also use some paragraph breaks. Uh, if I see a, gi a gigantic page full of text, it's just too, it's, it's honestly, it's too, too hard to get through. But thank you, Kyle, for sending me and, and I will, I will read this when I get a chance. This one's called Hi from Ginger Sugarbush 905. Hi, Mark. I tried to call in September 19th. I got through, but you were talking to other people. I was long distance call from Canada. Sorry if I laughed really loud when the guy said we should be able to see China. Anyway, I'll keep this short. Had a great idea for the Flat Earth license plate. Wanted to share with anyone but Ontario. I want this plate. Flat ASFK. Hmm. Eight letters. If Ontario can let you get away with ASFK, I think it's a good one. Uh, anyways, has, have a good one, Brian. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Awesome. I, I, and by the way, that reminds me, if anyone else out there has a Flat Earth license plate, because a couple of people showed me at the conference on their phones, like, look, I got a Flat Earth plate. I go, I haven't seen that before. How can I put it in my compilation if you haven't sent it to me? Make sure you send me a picture of it so I can give you credit, because I'll put it in all the slideshows and my press kits. Moving on. This one's called Great Interview with Mysterious Radio. Mark, I discovered you on the Mysterious Podcast. Truthfully, I listened, expect to, expected to laugh, but by the end, I was intrigued, and I've started watching your videos. They're great. I believe in intelligent design, but I also believe in the existence of extraterrestrials. Are these scenarios compatible in the Flat Earth model? Yes, they are. 
uh, except that they wouldn't exactly be aliens from Mars and Jupiter and Neptune and Venus. They would just be either older civilizations, you know, older versions of us, or they would be different civilizations from potentially other enclosed worlds like this one. So you're right in the case where, yeah, they, they, they still work, still dovetail in quite nicely. They're just not really, really, really far away. That's all. Or they could be interdimensional. But either way, they're not from another spherical world because as far as I can tell, there are no spherical worlds. Anyway, he, he finishes with, I'm all in on the Antarctica conspiracy. You're right about the incredible restrictions there. Thank you for thinking for yourself. Jordan Barrett. You're very welcome, Jordan. And again, sorry that it's taking me so long to get back. I'm looking at the dates on some of these. Like, ugh. I'm going to keep going, though, at least until uh, I keep reading doing, and doing email shows until I'm so busy that I can't. But you guys will figure that out eventually. This one's called Questionable Moon. Mark, sometimes you can see the moon during the day, but how can someone on the night side of the planet see the same moon at the same time? How can the moon be on different sides of the planet at once? You're absolutely right. If you get a chance, go into YouTube, type in Flat Earth Moon, a whole bunch of videos on this topic. If anybody's had any questions about the moon, honestly, for anything or anything else, just be specific. So type in Flat Earth Sun, Flat Earth Tides, Flat Earth Photography, just go anything you want. The, we've, we've got tons and tons and tons of content out there. Just saying. This one's called Only an Inquiry. Mark, after viewing your clues to the Flat Earth Theory, thank you, interesting at the least, questions, should your research uncover a conspiracy that would affect and or threaten not only one species, but all life as we know it, why are you alive <laughs> and able to bring forth such claims? I've known people, good innocent people, axed, he actually put axed, like with an axe, axed to death because someone thought they knew something that would jeopardize their way of life. So why would a powerhouse like the USA let the truth be told with so many what ifs? Or is my theory that the idiots are taking over, correct? Live dumb, think dumb, breed dumb. I've never actually heard that before. Devolve. No sense to evolve if we suck in a can. If we suck in a can. So back to zero the hard way. The bliss it must be to melt into dumbness. Sigh. Thanks for your time, Dak P. Hmm. I don't know exactly, exactly know how to respond to that. Other than no, yeah, nobody's approached me. I've got any weird phone calls. Uh, nobody's chasing me in cars. No, no black sedans or black vans or anything out there. So, but yeah, I wonder that too sometimes. Uh, this one's called Survival Guide. Mark, I was wondering if you could please send me your Survival Guide. Also, you need to play Beverly Hills by Weezer every time those guys call your show. Thank you, John. Uh, he's talking about. The lovely gentleman from Beverly Hills that call it my radio show pretty much every week at this point. And as far as the survival guide goes, I'm shooting that off to him right now. Anyone wants a free survival guide, it's in PDF format. It's only about two megs. Just shoot me an email that says, hey, I want your survival guide. You don't even have to really put anything on the topic. And I will respond back and just attach and bling, you can have it. But do me a favor and print it out if you get a chance because if something bad happens and the power goes out, you don't want to be like scrambling to read this thing on your phone. Better to have a printed copy. You say, no, I can charge my phone in my car and, and keep it going. I go, well, you might be able to unless you put the guide on the cloud. Who knows what you do. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Hi, Mark. The Flat Earth Theory is interesting. However, I have a question that I couldn't find an answer to. I looked up a flight path that starts from Anchorage, Alaska and ends in the Abakan Airport in Russia. The flight was only 6,200 kilometers on flightmath.com. These are almost the furthest two points on the map. If the Earth was flat, it would have to fly over North America, Europe, and part of Asia to get there and would be in excess of 10,000 kilometers, if not more. However, the globe Earth is possible to fly between these two destinations with a lot less distance, distance between Alaska and Russia or neighbors technically from the east to west. Can you please explain? Thanks. Yeah, we know there's a scaling issue. We know the map has scaling issues, meaning the proportions might be somewhat correct, maybe, but there's some distance problems. We, we know this. We're still trying to work it out. Look, uh, the, the Flat Earth map, we've only been doing it for a couple of years now. And eventually we're going to nail it down. So I'm dying to find out what the, the actual map is tweaked in that regards. I do not know. Don't know. 
All I know is the flight routes are completely screwed up, especially you're talking about the Northern Hemisphere. The Southern Hemisphere is what I focused on. The Southern Hemisphere flight routes are completely screwed up. Moving on, this one's called Hello. Hi, Mark. First of all, thanks for your information you have provided on your pages and how it's opened up my mind. To think the way we have been lied to all my life, the evidence stands for itself and every bit of research I've done still points to Flat Earth. Brilliant. I kind of have a question for you. I've been doing research now for about a year. I'm still very new to it. Every time I think I found a floor, I immediately find a Flat Earth version. Is more believable. God, are we this blind? Does September 23rd mean anything in the Flat Earth? Because everything I look at, I'm still learning. I'm sure, well, no, but I got to answer that real quick because September 23rd came and went and nothing happened. I'm sure you've been through the same at some point torn between what I now know and what I learned and as you said unlearning this real hard and not knowing real eyes and then you know realize and then realize got it uh well thank you for your time and I don't know if I'll ever get a reply or not but keep up the good work and you're certainly certainly got another follower kind regards Simon and I don't even know what the what I'm looking for a question mark here oh December September 23rd mean anything no of course, by the time I write back to him, he'll already know that September 23rd didn't do anything. Although, and and by for the people that mentioned to me that I have 23 in my email, the only email that I use is msargent23 at comcast.net. That was chosen completely randomly for me by Comcast over 20 years ago. And I didn't know that there was some significance to 23 until much, much later. So, yeah, no, I did not pick 23. I just said I just want M sergeant, but you know military sergeant. There's a lot of a lot of those out there, and I don't even know what the number is up to now. But I was early enough in the game that I got 23, so I'll take it. This one's called Welcome Sammy Watkins. Hi Mark, let me know if I beat you to it. Just got this right now. Have a great day. And this was when Sammy Watkins, a football player for the United States NFL National Football League, came out as a flat earther. Good for him. More the merrier. This one's called Inside the Dome and Sat Phones. Hey, Mark, please refer to me as BB and read this on your show. I just had a few questions. One, I heard you mention the possibility of the sun and moon being inside the dome, and I want to know if that's the case despite the fake moon missions. Is it actually possible that we could travel to the moon? No, we're not going there. Nobody's going there. I don't know if you can land on it at all. I mean, it might be a three-dimensional object, but uh, it's a pretty safe bet you, you can't get there. And he follows with, I can't quite remember the name of the government mission. I believe it was called Operation Fishbowl. Yes, that would be the high altitude nuclear program. I might be wrong, but the government fired missiles at the dome attempting to penetrate it. Yes, I know. I put that in a close. Mm -hmm. If those missiles were able to reach the distance of the dome and the sun and the moon are within the dome, can you say we're able to send a man on the moon? No. No, no, no. No. I also remember a year ago hearing the government was going to test nukes by firing them into the moon. What are your thoughts on this? Well, they haven't. I, I, I. That's a that's a dicey proposition because you you can talk talk about it, but you can't actually do it because the moon is much much smaller. The burst, if you actually put something up there, would be much bigger in relation to the moon. Remember, mainstream science of the moon is, says the moon is two thousand miles wide at least. We say it's less than fifty miles wide. That's a that's what ninety seven percent smaller. Uh, yeah, you don't want to put you don't want to do anything on the moon. Uh, and his last question, I'm from a small island that got hit from the hurricanes that have been affecting the Caribbean lately. The hurricane absolutely destroyed the island, including the cell towers, disabling cell phone use countrywide. The only means of com communication was by satellite phones, which pers I personally saw work. Flyer suggests that satellites don't exist. If, if so, how do sat phones work? I would love to hear your thoughts on these. Please keep up the good work. Thanks, BB. Uh, yeah, when it comes to sat phones, I mean, there's some. No, I'm not saying that sat phones don't work at all. Obviously, I've seen them as well. What I'm saying is, is that the satellites that you're bouncing the signals off for sat phones, and I think sat phones is a very, very, very small percentage of what's being used out there, uh, is is being rerouted through something else. Meaning the satellites aren't being launched through rockets. It could be a modified AWAC plane. It could be a satellite on a balloon. Who knows? We could be bouncing frequencies off a. Uh, a fine point in the structure itself. I don't know, uh, but do are they launching satellites with rockets? No, I don't. I don't believe it for a second. Be, there's so many different ways I could go with. It. Look up flat Earth satellites if you get a chance. There's a. You don't have to ask me for that one, but thank you for the question. 
This one's called High Altitude Balloons. Go figure. Hey Mark, I'm a fan of your videos. I am about a month into realizing that we live on a flat plane. Thanks to autoplay on YouTube, I came across your Clues documentary. I laughed at the beginning of it and I was in shock by the end of it. Good work. Just a thought, what if two people on opposite sides of Earth were to send up high altitude balloons in hopes of communicating with each other? Whether it be a light or a signal uh, of some kind, if one were able to see the other or if a radar was some kind of some kind was used, maybe this idea wouldn't work. But what if it did? Thoughts? I just saw D. Marble's video on the sun being visible from England and Australia, and it got me thinking. Anyway, I'm excited to see how this all turns out. Flat Earth is on my mind constantly. Take care, Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan, it, that's, that's not a bad test. I don't think the balloons are going to be big enough to carry, the, the balloons we're using anyway, big enough to carry a device that can communicate with another balloon device and of course how would you route it back down to the ground the, you know would you have to wait till both balloons descended i'm not exactly sure how you're transmitting to each other but i like the out of the box thinking it's good eventually someone's gonna come up with an idea i never heard that idea before and i've heard a whole bunch at this point this one's called oh let's see this one's called flat earth meetup in vancouver bc there's a video Hang on, let me click on the video real quick. And the video is called Flat Earth uh, Vancouver Meetup. Oh, yeah, that was the one that was supposed to be shut down because the, that woman called to the restaurant and said, don't let the Flat Earthers in. He goes, shout out to you from Daryl and I. Ooh, you know what? I might as well. Did I say? Yeah. Uh, yep. Shout out to you from Daryl and I. You can post on your channel or give a shout out to us. I'll let you know the next one. A mock. M-A-K or Mac. Uh, and he was at the conference, so great to meet him, and so great to meet everybody else. I, I, this is the first Q&A email I'm doing since the conference, and guys like him make it all worthwhile for me. So thank you for that. This one's called YouTube and Flat Earth. Hello, Mark, just three questions. How does gravity work in a Flat Earth model? Uh, do I have to even answer that? It pulls it straight down, how's that? Or if you're into the buoyancy thing, then it's buoyancy. But I think it, it's molecular magnetism that's pulling straight down, which is very, very similar, if not identical, to the globe Earth model, which apparently pulls it down and towards the center. For some example, for example, do you experience more gravity at or near the rim? No, no, you don't. No, don't, don't think of it like the Vsauce model. If the, yeah, if it was spinning like a merry-go-round, you would, but that'd be centrifugal force. You wouldn't be experiencing more gravity at the rim. You'd just be, uh, the tendency would be pulled out, but it's not spinning at all. It's not moving, period. It's not moving at all. So there's no, there's no extra gravity there. Why are we in an enclosed system? Why not? It's easier. It's more efficient. It's, if you're going to build a world, it is easier to put everyone in an enclosed system and then just tell them they're not. That, that's why. And of course, why does it matter that we do or don't do in such an enclosed structure? Because if an enclosed system is true, how do we know we are even really alive? For example, we could just be a computer model or a simulation. Absolutely right. Kind regards, Marie. By this point, because she sent this, oh boy, over a month ago, two months ago, practically, she's, she's probably already in, in, in with us because she's asking all the right questions. Those are all really, really great, great questions. And once she gets to a certain stage, she will have all of these answered for her in, by just doing her own research. So thanks for that. This one's called questions. I get a lot of ones called questions. Mark, thank you for all your work regarding the flat earth. I have a few questions. It's amazing. Just about every voicemail I ever get starts, starts with that. They say, I listened to Under the Dome, full documentary. I listened to They Are Hiding God with the, the Grey's Lyre. I listened to Flat Earth Clues. I have a few questions. And generally, I don't call them back unless they, they make two or three more calls because you got to get through it by yourself. Like Rob Skiba and a whole bunch of other people. Look, don't take my word for it. You know, who, who am I? Do your own research. Prove this thing wrong. Anyway, so this guy's got a few questions. First one is, what is the sun? Second one, do the creators live in the dome of their own? Or did they live in a place similar to the illusion they have created for us, like a spherical planet, stars, interstellar travel. Three, why does a flat Earth have two hemispheres? Seems to be an oxymoron. Trying to understand many other questions I could ask. Thanks so much, Chris. Chris, 
by this time, he's already answered a whole bunch of them. You guys, I anyone's listened to my show long enough, I'm not going to answer those for you. But I'm but I had to read it because I'm going to give you an idea of you know I get the same sort of questions all the time. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth. Mark, thanks to you and Eric Dubé, I've been awakened since knowing the truth about Flat Earth, and now the dominoes are falling. What can I do to contribute? Big thanks, Thong Tran. I don't know where Thong Tran is from. Uh, Thong Tran, if you are listening, spreading the word at this point, getting it out there, whatever you're good at, whatever you're comfortable with, what's whatever your specialty is. Remember, Flat Earth University, that's, that's really what we're talking about here. Uh, once you get in, well, what's your specialty going to be? Are you into street activism? Do you do water tests? Do you do land tests? Do you do balloon tests? Do you make music videos? Do you tear down NASA? Do you uh, analyze the sun and the moon? There's all sorts of things you can do. So whatever you're comfortable with, that's what you should be. You know, don't don't look for for gaps that we have at this point. It's whatever you're good at. That was me drinking lemonade, by the way, not whiskey although sometimes i wish i was this one's called flat earth mark i would like to thank you for your videos i believe the earth is flat myself and first started with eric dubé videos but as time gone on i seem to think he is some sort of shill i know he classes you as a shill but i feel you are one of few i can trust but this video has got me thinking am again can you give me any feedback on it I am from the UK and he sent me a video it's called wow it's called flat earth debunked 50 reasons the earth is not flat globe earth proof from Fatima sacrifice he's only got 500 subscribers he did this in oh oh it's not this guy April 2nd 2016 has 130,000 views and it's almost dead even 50 and 50 for and against 1800 for and 1800 against so no, I'm not going to comment on it. It's, it's, that's old. old isn't, that video is 18 months old. All right. This one's called, thank you for your work. I have a question. Hi, Mark. I am a 43 year old college educated Christian male. Glad we got the demographics out of the way. I first heard you on coast to coast last year, or maybe two years ago. Actually, it was two years ago. I felt the spirit of truth witness to me as I listened. I have been studying ever since. Thank you. After watching the two videos by the guy who used to be a painter and was recruited by NASA to paint planets, I forgot his name. I wish I could find more by him. A question arose in my mind. Why would the other planets be spherical? Are they not planets? To put a long equation simply, I believe in the Nephilim as aliens, and I am aware of the Archon agenda and the forbid in worship of the heavenly host could the planets and stars be points of residency for these ancient beings do you think the planets are basically holograms if you're right we'll, we we will never go to mars but what is mars i would appreciate your opinion even if it's a short answer and or any links thank you michael parker um some of them i'm not going to answer the mars one of course you know i have an opinion on which is the orion program otherwise known as the united states mars mission is not going anywhere I don't care who says what. If NASA says they're going, if Elon Musk says they're going, no, no, no one's ever going. We, we can't even get back to the moon. Elon Musk said that we'll be, you know, that he was going to send two people around the moon, what, six months from now? Where Where's that? Where's the capsule? He said they were going to take two tourists around the moon in the middle of 2016. We don't have any booster rocket for it. We don't have any capsule for it. We don't even know the names of the people that are paying or the crew that's going to be piloting. So what is Elon Musk actually telling us anything? No, he's doing nothing. He's just pulling headlines out of his butt is what he's doing. And, every, and the media covers it every time he opens his mouth. I don't even know. I do not know why that they, he isn't under more scrutiny. You know, he's making huge claims. And thank God his company isn't public. So anyway, moving on. This one's called Also Loved Your Shows. Mark, I am an obvious, avid listener of every work you spoke since the clues. You sure, you sir, have been truly a life changer. I know, I know, you hear it, but it, but goddamn, <laughs> thank you. I really rolled with this thing, and damn it, I had no idea how quick we could organize. The Boston Globe thing was an act of God. He contacted us. I have a good feeling. My two-year never-met F.E. friend. LOL. Anyway, we're going to screw with some high-end high, high -end college. He's swearing a lot in this. Uh, 
guys tomorrow, maybe teach them a thing or two. Hopefully, we'll live stream as well. And hey, if you can't make that really no big, it's rude. I even asked when I did. But hey, man, thanks for being my entertainment thought complexer sanity tester. It's made me reevaluate everything ever. And I just keep, keep, keep reevaluating. It's a blessing. Flat love, brother Sean. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. This one's from Paul. It's no subject. To whom it may concern. I'm assuming that would be me. What is the estimated di diameter of the inside ring of Antarctica and the height of the dome and the sun? I do not know. We're still working that out. The ins uh, diameter, uh, what, 20,000 miles? Something like that, maybe? Height of the dome and sun, eh. That's, that's a tough one because we don't know if the sun is inside or outside of the firmament. And when it comes to the dome itself, if you follow the United States military, they said they were firing rockets up there upwards of 400 kilometers back in the early 60s. Then it could be, I, I would say, at least hundreds of kilometers high. I mean, there's some people that have said, oh, it's, it's less. Some people say it's way more. I'd say it's at least hundreds of kilometers. It could be several thousand. But thank you for addressing me as to whom, whom it may concern. This one's called 24 Days of Sunspots video. Hi, Mark. Thought you might enjoy my latest quick sun observations video, yours to use how you might wish. And if I click on it, the video is called 24 Day Sunspot Observation with Nikon P900 on Flat Earth. And I already watched it and I already thumbed up. And I think I made a comment. Yep, love the vid and smiled at the music. And it's got a perfect rating right now. It's 22 and 0. Good for you. And that's from Flat Max UK. So check out that, that video if you get a chance. It's kind of fun. Right on. This one's called Please Read. And it's abbreviated. PLZ Read. Hey, Marky. My name is Tony from Sydney, Australia. Remember the name. Anyway, I'll get straight to the point. I'm not trying to scare you or anything, but I see it more clear as each day goes by. Flat Earth is basically America imploding from the inside out. They know this. And the first country it will completely destroy is America, obviously. So all this BS with North Korea, America just needs an excuse to bomb its own people and blame it on North Korea. It's perfect. I'm sure this thought has crossed your mind more than once. September 11 proves America will harm its own population proactively. The reason I email you is because we need you in the Flyers community more than you realize. I know you possibly think you don't play much of an active role these days, but believe me, if America does the unthinkable and takes you away from us, well, it's hopefully not, and the Flyers community is left with people like Eric, we will be screwed. Oh, I don't know about that. I think the Flyers roster is m very, very deep. And uh, it's not, not, not just Eric. And of course, Eric's over in Thailand. I'm around his age, and we just simply don't have the wisdom and life experience to make decent decisions in this ever so important community. What are you calling me old? I know, I know I'm 49, 50. I know, I'm not looking forward to that. I, I think maybe I'll just hide when I hit 50. I know you can't just leave your residence, not to mention your country, because of this threat. So I'm not sure exactly what I want to achieve with this email. But it was most definitely not sent to scare you. Keep safe, mate. We need you, Tony T. Thank you, Tony. And no, I'm not worried. I'm not. Yes, America is is in trouble. They they have been for a while now. If you wanna you wanna see evidence of that, watch a rant on YouTube by Dylan Radigan when he was working for MSNBC. He was hosting a show, and he comes out and says, "Look, the United States." He was very clear about it, is being extracted. We're being hollowed out from the inside. The, the exterior of the United States is just a shell. We, it kind of reminds me of the Soviet Union in a way, where before the, the breakup of the Soviet Union into all the, all the factions, because that, and, and he quit. He quit M NS, MSNBC because of that. So check that out if you get a chance. Yeah, I, I do worry for America. I do love it, but I understand it. America has been the, the dragging its heels with the whole New World Order thing. And it's it's too independent. You you want a perfect example of that would be the metric system. The metric system is used just about everywhere else, <laughs> except for the United States. I was I was in what sixth grade when they tried to roll that thing out. We were having none of it. Uh, all those units, liters and meters and all you know, all that. No no. We want feet and inches and pounds ounces stuff like that we we're sticklers we're stubborn when it comes to that sort of stuff 
So, th but thank you for the heads up. It is appreciated. This one's called Survival Guide. And a bit about my Flat Earth story. Uh, all right, I'll read this one. Greetings, Mark Flat Earth. Flat Earther, since my cousin introduced me back in March of this year, did my own research, not exactly to debunk it, but to prove it myself that my cousin wasn't crazy. I hardly, highly regard this his input on several things, so I wanted to take a closer look at it to see what he was getting at. It was an interesting journey, and still is, watching the videos while at work, binge-watching FE videos on YouTube. I recently introduced my brother in London to this whole reality, and he was quite open to it on the first couple things I brought up, plus he's already a conspiracy theorist. Also, just as with me and my cousin, my brother highly values and regards my input, so the general influence and respect between us possibly had a part to play as well. A co-worker caught me watching a Flat Earth video on YouTube and tried to ridicule me for it, which I really don't take too kindly to, so I put him in his place. We eventually leveled each other to where he allowed me the space to explain my reasoning and I eventually sent him flat earth videos and very thought-provoking questions about the globe he has yet to answer. Although he said he didn't want to watch anything over 20 minutes, I rebutted with, you can't expect to uncover centuries of deception and not do some extensive research, which of course involves watching hours of flat earth videos explaining said deception. He's shown some signs of coming around, but we haven't spoken much about it since. Still keeping a watchful eye. The thing I had trouble with the most was understanding the way the sun and the moon travel over the plane. I'm good on that now, but just trying to figure out ways to completely know this subject so I can best explain it to people I know and trust. Usually I test the waters first like I did with my brother. Things will unfold soon enough and I will be steadily watching and taking whatever necessary actions needed to spread the truth about where we all live. This truly is a ridiculously upscaled version of The Truman Show took us this long to find out haha ha. <laughs> I was gonna go to the FE convention this year but I miscalculated the amount of PTO I have left at work so I bought the FE, FE early bird pa online pass and my cousin and I will be checking that out with anticipation under the dome was one of my first flat earth videos if not the first I stumbled uh, upon and even though you didn't exactly produce it no I did produce it under the dome yeah that was me it was all me I mean yeah, it was mashed up. It was your voice and your words. So thank you tremendously. And my slides. Jeez, hopefully people remember that. So thank you tremendously for helping me further in the right direction. I've actually watched it more than once, maybe three times now. Did you ever get in contact with the person that actually put it together? No, it's me. It's No, it's totally me. He goes, leisure, leisure X or something like that. Who is that person? Oh my God, he's just a guy that took the Flat Earth Clues. I'd like to thank him or her also. Great production. I also watched Eric DeBay's 200 Proofs. Though the only thing is that Eric also brings up a lot of other supernatural and mystical stuff in his other videos, and I'm not ready to accept right off the bat or even research right now. I'm still trying to solidify my belief in the flat earth. Not that I'm shaky, I just want to be able to recant the globe to others with as much backing and knowledge as possible. I do already believe in plenty supernatural things, but my plate is full with this right now. ODD is another trooper that got my attention, and D Marble too. He's a cool dude. <laughs> Reminds me of that movie. He's a righteous dude. Uh, that's Ferris Bueller, by the way. I'm glad I encountered you all honestly. Keep doing what you do, and don't forget to send me that survival guide. Thanks again. Stay flat. Flattest regards. Dwayne Miller. Hopefully, I sent Dwayne the survival guide. Usually, if you put it in the headline, I send it to you immediately. So... This one... we got a few time for a few more, anyway. This one's called AAU. Mark, from what I hear off your videos, you receive a lot of flack from people that are not prepared to test or challenge what has been spoon-fed to them and find it easier to attack the so-called goofbags. Goofbags? <laughs> That's new. I just wanted to say that I have found this to topic by pure chance in the last few months and have done my own research and find your videos very enlightening. I collect good videos that I will use to show people when they are ready and have put yours in this group. Have made a point to look at all your videos Thanks for your efforts, and may you be encouraged to continue. Thank you for that. Oh, let's see. This one's called Satellites. Mark, first... I'm sorry, excuse me. Firstly, thank you for all your videos. My son and I love them. You say there are no satellites, but when we're in northern British Columbia, we saw what we thought were satellites moving across the sky very high up. They looked like stars, were the same size, and were definitely moving 
uh, like in an orbit pace that it makes sense. Can you explain, please explain to me what these may have been? Thanks you for your time and great videos. Keep them coming. Regards, Aileen Grayley from Canada. Uh, yeah, Aileen, I've mentioned it many times. There's a lot of stuff flying in the sky. Look up with night vision. Do I think that most of them are satellites? No, I do not. I've seen too many with ballistic capabilities and flight characteristics, which do not make sense at all. That being said, are there some things up there floating around that are us? Yeah, probably. But are they launched up on rockets? No. Are they in some sort of orbit that, that goes around a sphere? No. Are they being suspended on a high altitude balloons from the NASA high altitude program? Possibly, yes. Uh, could they also be modified spy planes or modified AWAC planes or modified whatever? Whatever's up there. Yes, they could. So take that all into consideration. Uh, let's see here. This one's an interesting title. Is Bruce Springsteen a closet flat earther? Mark, I happen to be a big fan of Bruce Springsteen. Last spring, I read his autobiography, Born to Run. Eh, that's a shocker. He was going to use that title. At the bottom of page 160 to the top of page 161, Bruce is talking about how they drove to California in a heavy snowstorm. This is what it says, word for word. The world has been plain down into a snow blind table. You could easily slide off the edges of it. It had been simplified into the passable and the impassable. The early ocean map makers had it right. The world was flat and a wrong move too far to the left or right could bring you to the brink of the abyss and beyond there be monsters. Hmm. Later in the book, Springsteen is telling the tale of another cross country road trip. He writes, we travel with the Western sky black and pressing in around us. Then I see the lights. I need this town right now. It's the most important town in America. It's my life in God's firmament. In his book, he mentions both the world is flat and the firmament. I think Bruce is a closet flat earther. Yup, word for word. I'm sure he was just saying that metaphorically, but also interesting that in the late 1970s, he wrote and recorded this song. Check out the title, Can't Do That on a Globe. And let's see, the title of the song is called Living on the Edge of the World, which was somebody put out on YouTube in 2010. Awesome. To end the email, he says, I'm not on Twitter, but I'm sure that Springsteen has a Twitter account. If you're on Twitter, is there any way you could contact him and ask him if he thinks the earth is flat? I suppose possibly. Um, there's been other people, that, you know, REM, Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, there's been some other bands that are out there that, that kind of go along these lines. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to leave it up to them. Everything, I, everything we have done so far, at least from my point of view, has been unsolicited. It's come to us. So if somebody else wants to come out, I'm looking for another celebrity. Can't wait to see what it might be. This one's called, oh boy, here's a whole bunch of questions. You know, let's read it anyway. Heck with it. Um, hi, Mark. Top important. This is not from, from America. I guarantee this. I hope you're doing well. So I just watched your video on YouTube and I have one question. Actually, it is my suggestion. By the way, my English is not so good. Glad you clarified that. So I will try to correctly describe my opinion. I saw many private rocket launches to the sky with GoPro camera on it. So this rocket reaches the sky and stop then somehow with strange sound like a water. So guys, why you don't fix two cameras inside of this rocket? One with the sky view, that's a good point, and second camera with earth view. Do you get my point? Why are all these rocket cameras only looking down? Why don't you fix the cameras which look up? Also a good point. So at least we could see what they're what is there in reality? Darkness, blue sky, glass, water, energy wall, invisibility power. Ooh, that's a good term. I like that, invisibility power. What? So what stops your rocket on the sky? And I watch many other such rocket launches, but all of them have only one view, which is the Earth side. So logically, these guys could fix two cameras and see themselves. So they were smart enough to launch personal rockets with cameras and GPS inside and find it later but they didn't insert one more camera, which could destroy all hesitations and answer too many questions, right? I guess you got my point. Truly, Rajab Khan. Awesome, Rajab. And, and you know what? I'm going to use that. I'm going to use part of that when people say, because people have been asking me recently, what would it take for you to believe in a spherical Earth? And, and before I was saying, well, I need a 4K camera that's running unedited from a rocket all the way to where you know the Earth starts shrinking down into a ball as you're leaving. But now I'm going to amend that saying you got to have two 4K cameras, one pointing down, one pointing up. Thank you to Rajab. 
All right, moving on. This one's called Effie Florida. Mark, hello, my name is Matt Wallace, and I've been a flat earth realist for about two years now. I first discovered truths of the flat earth when I lived in Alaska. I've since moved to Florida to be closer to my family. Since being here, I can't find any sort of community that f supports the flat earth. I've found truths that are not readily available to the general population and feel they would be best placed in your hands to do with as you please. I have no other avenues to spread these truths, so I hope you can help. I thank you for your time. I'm not looking forward, and I am looking forward to hearing back from you. If it's easier to contact via phone, my number is, and it gives me the number. Sincerely, Matt Wallace. All right, Matt, I may have to call you, see what's going on. This one's called Question Mark. So what happens when we enter the hole in the middle of the earth? What knowledge can I research in meantime or could be doing to advance my studies? EBJ. Uh, EBJ, just type in Flat Earth into YouTube or Google and just start following the content. There's a whole bunch of there. I, honestly, for, for most people, I just try to tell them, like, do your homework. Do your own research. D absorb as much as you can and ask questions. Ask, keep asking questions. Don't take anybody's initial video for as, as gospel. Uh, if, if you have any doubts, you know, do your own tests and, and look at other opinions. Except for the globalists, of course, because they suck. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Okay, we got time for a few more. This one's called Hurricane Irma. Hey, Mark, just wanted to point out something I noticed tonight. If you look up the video of Hurricane Irma radar, you will find a time-lapse video of the hurricane cloud vortex circling over the course of one minute. They show this as actual cloud coverage moving and have the states drawn in underneath to show where it is. Well, if you watch the video of the ISS passing over Irma at nasa.gov, there is no cloud movement, nothing. It still amazes me that they can get away with so much that people don't question the information we are given or how they obtain it, that nothing will change unless people open their eyes. My eyes are open. Anyway, I'm a big fan of your work. I haven't caught you live, but I listen to your YouTube episodes all day long at work. I woke up on a flat earth about a month ago. I'm always looking for your new stuff. I think DITRH has the best content on NASA. I like Eric Dubay's stuff, but he can come on, on a little strong for someone who's looking into flat earth for the first time. In my opinion, your Clue series and Dee Murphy's video are just right for a newcomer. It's so I'm sort of like the Goldilocks zone. Uh, it's important that we keep it, keep it classy on a topic that is already heavily ridiculed. The last thing we need is someone dismissing it after only a few minutes due to the personality of the guy or girl presenting it. You're doing a good service to the movement. Shout out to Indiana. I keep looking for an Indianapolis setup. Keep up the good work, Mark. Best regards, Jonathan. Very welcome, Jonathan. All right. Do we have time for one more? Do we have one more? Yeah, let's do at least one more. And hopefully we'll end on a fun one. This one's called Plane Tracking Project. Keep an eye on the sky with nerves in Phoenix. Hi, Mark. Left a message on your voicemail Sunday. Uh, I'm a programmer from Ontario, Canada. I saw a YouTube video about a project to track planes via their 1090 megahertz broadcast band called ADS-B. This would be the basis of a great flat earth project. People can voluntary, voluntarily deploy a Raspberry Pi 3 with a receiver and collect data of planes flying around, sometimes up to 180 nautical miles away. The devices could be configured to relay the data to a server which could act as a storehouse of plane data. The purpose would be to track the actual location of a plane on this route Sorry, I'm sorry, say from Los Angeles to Sydney or any flight that is purportedly in the Southern Hemisphere. Here's a screenshot and link. Regards, Michael. Hmm, interesting. All right. Uh, let's see here. I can get through a couple more. Sorry, I, I got to punch through as many as I can. Uh, this one's called Old Antarctica Mission Flag Image. Mark, I can't remember what the source film was, but I grabbed this image from Regards Lane. Oh, uh, yeah, the Antarctica... Now that's interesting. The Antarctica that cannot be a real Antarctica flag image. Cannot be. No, 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 no. No, the image is too flat and the flag is too wavy because it looks like the the outer edge uh with with no continent in the inside. That's that's interesting though. Cannot be the real flag. It's but but thank you for sending that. I got to be careful with the Photoshop stuff I spread around. Uh can we should we end on that one or, or are we um we end on this one? Let's end on this one. This one's called Aussie Flat Earther. Okay, this will be the last one. Hi, Mark. I've been following your show for six months and have passed the period of intense feet flat earth research. It's done and dusted for me. I took the red pill and the consequence of this realization that 99.99% of people I know 
will will not go near the idea. Australia is a dumbed down population, not unlike the U.S. Mind control has been in play for decades via the media, media and advertising. It's the reason, really, that the planet is screwed, but so many people are invested in the illusion. Since childhood, it takes a brave heart to throw the education and societal mind wash into the garbage. I consider myself an intuitive flat earther. My common sense brain always questioned the NASA program since I was a kid. The moon landing fakery was my first bridge to FE and then the Antarctic Treaty. I have known anyone. I've never known anyone who has flown to Antarctica. It's the Truman Show. We are trained where not to look and given lame arts reasons why not to look. The saddest part of the FE is the realization that we are almost alone in a dumb and dumber world that is leading itself to destruction. For me, the real benefit of FE wisdom is the escape from the prison earth matrix of global greed and stupidity. It's all obviously linked, but when will the chains be broken? The John Carpenter film, They Live, expressing the lie perfectly. When you have the eyes to see or the sunglasses to see, you will be amazed by the lie that life is. Since about two months ago, Australian media has been obsessed with the setting up of a space agency. It crept up slowly, and then this week, an announcement that OZ is entering the space age. What a load of crap. And what does this mean? Our national broadcaster, ABC, gobbles it all up without analysis, and the taxpayer will now be forking out for a BS space program. As if the debunking of NASA is not complete enough, the NASA debunking must be the most fun aspect of FE. But despite how obvious it is, people really are entertained to believe, I'm sorry, entrained to believe anything. I guess the BS may be a response to the growing FE movement. Be interested in your views on this. By the way, you mentioned an Australian FE dating site. Can you email it back to me? <laughs> I only have two FE friends in, in OZ. And uh, the, the idea of, I, I suppose they pronounce it Oz, but he spells it OZ. Um, the idea of having a close special one that is not clued into FE horrifies me. There is only rubbish FE activity on Facebook for Australia. The need to expand my FE social network is pressing. Thanks for your work and I will continue to follow your shows. And in particular, Q&A, which is a great insight into the minds of other flat earthers. Thanks, James from Adelaide, Australia. All right, that's it. That's all we're going to do today. And thank you very much for everyone's emailed in. If you want to email in your questions and comments or whatever, you can send them to msargent23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.